Columbia Workshop presents the 500 hats of Bartholomew Cubbin. The place? The kingdom of did. The time? Well, who can say? The weather? Why, like everything else, unpredictable. Our story begins in the village square. Attend! <laughs> Seba, would you mind telling me what's all the excitement? My goodness gracious sake. Don't you know? No, sir. What's your name? Bartholomew Cubbins, sir. Do you live in the kingdom of Did, Bartholomew Cubbins? Oh, yes, sir. I live here. Are you a loyal subject of King Derwin? Yes, indeed, sir. I can see his castle from my house. And where is this house of yours? We live in the edge of the cranberry bog. I pick cranberries and bring them to town to sell. That's how I make a living. And you say you can see the castle of King Derwin from your house? Yes, sir. It's miles across the valley from us. But even then, every time I look across, I I bow very low. Hmm. You know, just in case His Majesty might be able to see me. Have you ever seen him? No, sir, but I'd like to. Then stand here by me, for soon he'll pass this way. His Majesty King Derwin will pass here? Right by here. That's why every loyal subject of the kingdom of Did is here today. There'll be trumpeters, horses with red and yellow trappings. The gold and purple coach with his majesty in it is to pass right by here. Goodness. So you'd better take off your hat. Oh, I will. Though I don't know that you could truly call it that. Excuse me, sir, but I'm very fond of this hat. Well, you can't say it has much shape. No, it's not exactly right. And certainly that red feather is sort of shabby. But it does stick straight up, sir. Oh, yes, yes, it does stick up. Well, it's sort of out of shape, sir. It's been in our family for years. I can believe it. Oh, yes, sir. It belonged to my father. And before that, it was his father's. And before that, it was his father's father's uncle. You see... Here comes the procession. Take off your hat. Our great King Derwin of the Kingdom of Death, with all his courtiers and his knights and his soldiers and his governors and the King's own guard, clear the way! Majesty. What's your name, fellow? Uh, um, for Bartholomew C- 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 Cubbins, your ma- ma- Majesty. Stop stuttering. Y- 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 yes, sir. Do you or do you not take off your hat before your king? Yes, indeed, your Majesty. I, I do take off my hat before my king. Then take it off, this very instant. But, your Majesty, my hat is off. Impudence, impudence. How dare you stand there and tell me your hat is off? Majesty, I don't like to say that you're wrong. Excuse me, but my hat is off. Here, you see, I've I've got it in my hand. If that's your hat in your hand, what's that on your head? 
on my head? I, it's a hat. It, but, Your Majesty, it can't be my hat. Somebody behind me must have put it on my head. I don't care how it got there. Take it off. Yes, sir. Oh. By the crown of my father, did I or did I not command you to take off your hat? You did, Your Majesty, and I did. I, I took it off. I took it off twice now. You see, I've got a hat in each hand. Nonsense. There's still a hat on your head. Another hat? Come, come. What's the meaning of all this? I don't know, Your Majesty. It never happened to me before. Captain of the guard! Yes, Your Majesty? Arrest this impudent trickster. Swing him up behind you on your charger and take him to my castle. Up behind me, come in. Yes, sir. He won't take off his hat. 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 Bartholomew, follow me. Right down this corridor. Where are you taking me, please, Captain? To the royal throne room. What for, sir? His Majesty, King Derwin, is waiting for you. For me? I'd certainly hate to be in your shoes. But the king can't do anything dreadful to punish me because, well, I haven't really done anything wrong, and I won't be afraid. That'd be cowardly. Go to the royal throne room and take off your hat. Y yes, sir. There's another one. To the royal throne room. Yes, sir. Uh, where is it? Follow the black carpet. Majesty, it, it's me, Bartholomew Cummins. Enter at once. Bartholomew Cummins? Yes, Your Majesty. Oh. Young man, I will give you one more chance. Will you take off your hat for your king? Yes, indeed, Your Majesty, but I'm afraid it won't do any good. Take it off. Yes, sir. I'll take it off again, sir. There's always another hat on my head right away. Take them off faster. Yes, Your Majesty. Oh, dear. Oh, goodness faster. Yes, faster. Your Majesty. All right, sir. Oh, dear. Goodness gracious. Oh, oh my. Oh. Impudence, I call it. Plain impudence. Where is Sir Alaric, keeper of the records? Here, Your Majesty. Where? I don't see you. I was on the other side of this pile of hats, sire. Sir Alaric? How many hats do your records show that this impertinent and impudent young Bartholomew Cubbins has taken off and still has one on his head in front of his king? Uh, Your Majesty, 36 and 4 and... F I'm afraid he's taken off 45. 45? Yes, Your Majesty. I'm, I'm awfully sorry. Sorry? <laughs> And there were three more down in the town. And you must add on 87 more that blew off my head as we galloped up the hill to the castle. Uh, 87 and three, one, 135 hats. Come, come, this is too much. Sir Alaric, what do you make of all this nonsense? Very serious nonsense, Your Majesty. I advise you to call in an expert on hats. An expert on hats? Excellent. Captain of the guard. Fetch me Sir Snips. Sir Snips! Sir Snips! Now we shall see, young man. Will Sir Snips know what to do, Sir Alaric? <laughs> he ought to. He ought to. He makes everybody's hats in the whole kingdom. Everybody who amounts to anything. Sir Snips, Your Majesty. Sir Snips? Why, he's such a little man. He's even rougher than I am. And he's wearing a pair of scissors instead of a sword. What can he know about my hat? He knew enough to make that big hat he's wearing, which is bigger than he is. You uh, sent for me, King Derwin? Sir Snips, 
take a look at this boy's hat. Well? What's the matter with you, Sir Snips? Speak. I am speechless, Your Majesty. Speechless? By a hat like this? To think that I, Sir Snips, maker of hats for all the fine lords, hats of cloth of gold with precious jewels and ostrich plumes on them, and you ask me to look at this hat. Oh, it's the most ordinary hat I've ever seen. Oh, it is. Well, it's so ordinary. Let me see you take it off. Bend down, my lad, so I, Sir Snips, can take off your hat. Yes, sir. Screebies. Screebies! 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 Ah! Oh, dear. I'm afraid it frightened him when the new hat came. Oh, dear me. Dear you. Dear me. If Snips can't do anything about it, this is certainly not an ordinary hat. Sir Alaric, what's the record say? Uh, 128 and 3 and 5. This makes 136, Your Majesty. Mm. Uh, Your Majesty, if I might make a suggestion. Well? I advise that you call in your wise men. Of course. Of course. My wise men. Captain of the God! Bring me Nad, the wise man who knows everything. Nad, the wise man who knows everything. Nad, the wise man who knows everything. Here he is, Your Majesty. Ned, my wise man, can you take off this fellow's hat? Sir Alaric, is he made speechless too? No, Bartholomew, he never speaks. He's a wise man. If he doesn't speak, then what does he do? He thinks. Do you know what he's thinking? He's thinking that he doesn't know how to take off your hat. If Ned doesn't know how to take it off, Bring me the father of Nad. He's the wise man who knows more than everything. The father of Nad. The wise man who knows more than everything. The father of Nad. The wise man who knows more than everything. <laughs> Just thinking too, Sir Alaric? Oh, no. He's so wise that he doesn't have to think. Well, it looks as though you didn't know how to take it off either, father of Nad. Bring me the father of the father of Nad. He's the wise man who knows more than more than everything. The father of the father of Nad. The wise man who knows more than more than everything. He thinks either, does he, Sir Alaric? Oh, mercy, no. He's so wise that he doesn't even have to remember. Is that why he looks so puzzled? Now, young man, tut. No more of your impertinence. The whole kingdom is puzzled and you're in disgrace. I've had enough of this. My royal dignity is outraged. Isn't there anybody in my whole kingdom who can take off this boy's hat? What's the matter with you now, Uncle Derwin? Who's that? That is your nephew, Your Majesty, the Grand Duke Wilfred. He's just outside on the balcony. Oh, he is, is he? Maybe he knows something. Maybe a boy can save the kingdom. Wilfred, come here. What do you want to know, Uncle Derwin? Wilfred, there's a boy here who won't take off his hat. Oh, 
Why don't you take off your hat? Well, I did take it off. Well, it's still on, isn't it? But this is another hat. Well, take this one off, then. But it won't do a bit of good. Uncle, I know. I'll shoot it off. Huh? Well, Stand right there in the doorway. You're not going to shoot me with that bow and arrow, are you? I certainly am. Oh. I'm going to shoot off your hat if it takes every arrow I've got. Here they come. You see? Hey, say, what is this? I shot the hat right off your head, but it came back on again. Oh, no, Grand Duke Wilford, it's not the same hat. It's a different hat. What are you trying to tell me? People don't grow hats on their heads. I do. We're wasting time. Obviously, this is no child's play. Get me the mightiest bow and arrow in all my realm. Fetch me the yeoman of the bowmen. Yeoman of the bowmen! off this boy's hat and make it stay off. Oh, don't shoot that great big arrow at me, please. Please, please! Oh, dear me. 144 and 3 is 147 and 1 is 140. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, may I make another suggestion? Yes? It's magic. Black magic. That's what it is. Magic. Of course. That's what it is. Magic. Call my magician. The royal magician. The royal magician. What are they going to do to 149 me? 149 and 4 is 153, 154. They're going to cast a spell on you, Bartholomew, and get rid of your hat. Oh, your dear majesty, please don't let them cast any spell on me. Silence, you impudent fellow. <laughs> now we'll see you so smart, smarty. My royal magicians, proceed to get rid of this boy's hat. Dig a hole by furlongs deep, down to where the night snakes creep. Mix and mold the mystic mud. Malver, Malver, titter, tut. We're the royal magicians. I know you're the royal magicians. Stop muttering and get rid of this hat. All right, Bartholomew. They're going to cast their spell now. Get out there in the middle of the floor so the magicians can make a circle around you. Oh, dear. Well, all right. <laughs> I'd hate to be in your shoes. I don't blame you. <laughs> cast the spell. Winkabus, tinkabus, prodigy clay. Hat on this demon's head, fly far away. Howl, men, howl away, howl away, howl away. Yell, cat, yell away, yell away, yell away. Hat on this demon's head, sleep away, creep away, leap away, keep away, never come back. Well, that's a mighty good chat. Mighty good. Yes, but the hat is still there. By the crown of my father's, the hat is still there. Look here, magicians. When is this chant going to do any good? Be calm, your majesty, and have no fears. Our charm will work in ten short years. Ten years? I can't wait ten years to get rid of his hat. Away, fools. Out of my sight. Mix and mold the mystic mud. Malber, balber, titter, tut. We're the royal magicians. Oh, dear. What can I do? What can I do? I'll tell you what I do, Uncle Derwin. What is it, Wilfred? If I were king, I'd chop his head off. That would get rid of his hat. A dreadful thought. But I'm afraid I'll have to. Oh, no. No, Your Majesty. Young man, 
March down those steps to the dungeon and tell the executioner to chop off your head. Bartholomew Cubbins. What do you want? His Majesty King Derwin sent me down here for you to chop off my head. Come on in, then. What are you waiting for? Good morning, Mr. Executioner. Haven't you learned yet to close doors after you? What do you want? Well, the king says you have to chop off my head, so please get it over with. Oh, all right. But first, you've got to take off your hat. Why? I don't know. That's one of the rules. I can't execute anyone with his hat on. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I guess I know the rules. Then will you take it off for me, please? All right. Anything to oblige. Uh, hey, what? Now, just a minute. Say, what is this? I thought I took it off. You did, sir, but this is another one. I'll have to take that off, too. Oh, fiddlesticks. I can't execute you at all. Go back upstairs and tell that to the king. <laughs> back here. I'm very sorry, Your Majesty. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. My head can't come off with my hat on. It's against the rules. Oh, dear. That's true. Perfectly true. Sir Alaric, how many hats has he taken off? Uh, there were 155 before he went to the executioner, Your Majesty. And I took off 178 on the steps going down there, and then the executioner took off 13 more. 178 plus 13, 191, 346 hats. Uncle Derwin, I am completely bewildered. You're bewildered. What do you think I am? You're only a grand duke, but I'm a king. Well, there's only one thing left to do, Uncle. What is it? Send him up to the highest tower, and I, in person, will push him off. Wilfred, I'm surprised at you. But it's a good idea. Oh, no, Your Majesty. I'm sorry, Bartholomew, but we've tried everything else. So, up we go to the highest tower. Come on, everybody. This is my last chance. My very last chance. If I don't get off my hat before we reach that tower. Seven, three hundred and forty-eight, and sixty-two are four hundred and ten. Not, not so fast. I, I, I can't count them. Wait a minute. Four hundred and forty-six, four hundred and forty-seven, four hundred and forty-eight, four hundred and fifty-one, four hundred and fifty-two, four hundred. Oh, wait, Your Majesty, Your Majesty. The hats are changing. They're not all the same anymore. All these new hats are different. Wait, wait a minute. Don't push him off the tower. Wait for me. Oh, the king can't hear me. Wait, wait. Well, at last, the top of the tower. Step right out through this door, Bartholomew Cubbins. Yes, sir. And get up on that wall. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait to push you over. Yes, sir. Wait. Go on, Bartholomew. Get, get up wait. there. Oh, right, oh this is going to be wait. fun. It's important. Over you go. Wait. One, wait. two. Wait. wait a minute, Wilfred. King oh, Derwin. what Jeez. is it, Sir Alric? King Derwin, the hats, they've been changing. Hmm? Way back there, they... They stopped all being the same. What? All the old hats were the same, with just one feather. Yes. But suddenly, one hat had two feathers, then the next had two feathers, and then the next had three feathers. No. Oh, yes, and 
The next had three feathers and a little red jewel. A little red jewel? And the next had four feathers. And the next, and the next, each one was more beautiful than the one before. I can't believe it. And then, after that... Oh, oh, King Durbin. Look at the one on his head right now. Oh. Have you ever seen a hat like that before? There never was a hat like that before. It has ostrich plumes and cockatoo plumes and mockingbird plumes and bird of paradise plumes. And right in the very front? A ruby as big as a soup plate. Why? Why, it's even better and finer than my own crown. My hat? No, this new big one makes me madder than ever. Wait a minute, Wilfred. I won't wait. I'm going to push him off right now. Not so quick, my little nephew. I'll have to teach you that a grand duke never talks back to his king. Over my knee. Oh, no. No, no, don't hit me, Uncle Joe. I didn't mean it. No. There. Oh. Now, oh. down the stairs with you, Wilfred, before I spank you again. Oh. And now, Bartholomew, let me help you down from the wall before you fall over the wrong way. You mean, Your Majesty, that you're not going to push me over after all? Why not? for the world before you. But I would be very happy if you would sell me that wonderful hat. Sell you my hat? 489, 490, and 5, 495. That one on his head, Your Majesty, makes exactly 500. 500? See here, Bartholomew. Will you sell it for 500 pieces of gold? Anything you say, Your Majesty. You see, I've never sold one before. Then 500 it is. I'll take it right off your head. Oh, what a beautiful hat. What a beautiful hat. Give it to me. It didn't make any noise coming off. Look. Your Majesty, look. You took off his hat, and there isn't any new one. His head is bare. My head is bare. My head is bare at last. Look at my head, Your Majesty. Nonsense. Look at my head. In all your born days, Bartholomew Cubbins... Have you ever seen a king with a crown like this? Well, I'm glad you like it, sire. Like Captain of the Guard. Yes, Your Majesty. See that every hat this charming lad has given us is collected. Have them placed in a great crystal case by the side of my throne and bring me 500 pieces of gold at once. Yes, Your Majesty. And now, Bartholomew Cubbins, can you explain to the kingdom of Did how this strange thing happened? Well, all I can say is it, it just happened to happen, and it's not very likely to happen again. just heard the Columbia Workshop production, The 500 Hats of Bartholomew Cubbins, from the book by Dr. Seuss, adapted for radio by Stuart Ayers and Nyla Mack. Jack Grimes played the role of Bartholomew, and King Derwin was played by Howard Lindsay, co-author and co-star of the current Broadway stage success, Life with Father. Sir Alaric was played by Parker Fenley, Captain of the Guard by Ken Daniel, The Citizen by Neil O'Malley, Sir Snips by Mickey O'Day, Wilfred Eddie Ryan, The Executioner, Gene Leonard. The original music was composed and the orchestra conducted by Charles Paul. The entire production was under the direction of Nyla Mack. Next week, at the same time, the workshop will present an original comedy dedicated in loving memory to that much-lamented American institution, good old vaudeville. The piece is I Followed the Seals by Al Rinker and Anne-Marie Ewing. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.